Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Bible Study Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through His Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, at the end of verse 5, he said, For without me ye can do nothing. And that means absolutely nothing. Without him, we don't know how we truly belong to God. He is the one that's identifying who is who. And he sent his spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So this is how we know we belong to God. And without him, we can't do this because anybody coming to the father, they was drawn by Jesus Christ. All right. So now let's continue. Let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 135 and let's read verses one through six. So it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven, and in earth, and the seas, and all deep places. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on back in, family. Peace and love to everybody that's tuning in now and later. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ send his Holy Spirit and allow it, allow his Holy Spirit to rest mightily upon all of us that's tuning in now and later as we read through his holy word and get some understanding. All right. So what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired us to do or me to do. That is a few ways to know how you truly belong to God. And what we're going to take a look at throughout the course of this Bible study is how we truly belong to God. So a few questions that we can ask before we even get started with the Bible study is when you sin against God, do you. Do you have a conscience? Are you convicted? Do you feel terrible when you sin against him or are you sinning and then just going on about your merry way? All right. So we're going to take a look at a few things uh, because this might be a two part lesson, but we'll deal with the other part uh, at a later time. And uh, also the Lord was putting it on my mind to uh, re-upload that video that was uh, taken down by YouTube uh, on Wednesday. The last uh, live video that we had uh, did it uh, for some reason got taken down. But uh, these videos that's daily uploaded uh on uh every other day but wednesday they seem to go through clear so we'll try to redo that lesson uh lord willing one day soon maybe tomorrow i'm not sure i'll see what the lord want me to do i'll pray and ask but uh anyway let's get into this lesson let's go over here and let's find out you know how we truly belong to god because when we truly belong to god the only thing that we are concerned with is what's pleasing to the lord nothing else matters you know, we find ourselves asking ourselves, is this OK with you, Lord? Or we constantly in communication with God, seeing what's pleasing to him. Lord, can you guide my steps? Are we, you know, going off on our own or are we leaning on God's understanding? We have to lean on God's understanding, because if we lean on our own understanding, we will not be successful in anything that we do. So Psalms 10 and verse four. Let's get this out of the way. Right off the top, it says the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. So this is what separates a righteous person from a wicked person. A wicked person ain't even thinking about God. He's not seeking after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Not even thinking about him, not even considering that he the one that made you. But those of us that got the spirit of Christ Jesus. We always thinking about the Lord. This is why our behavior has changed over the years. 
because God has shown us certain things. He has put us through certain experiences to test our faith. All right. Let's go and see what Paul said. Let's go over here. And Paul, Paul was taught directly by God. So let's take a look at this because God came to him on the on the road to Damascus. And he knocked them down and blinded them for three days. So let's see what the apostle Paul had to say. This is how we know we belong to God because we have the spirit of God. Now, let's pay attention. Romans 8. Romans 8. And let's take a look at verses 6 through 9 and we'll skip down. So it says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So when we spiritually minded, it's life and peace. When you carnal minded, that's death. All right. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Are you just doing whatever you want to do? Are you going off of your own understanding, doing things that's contrary to the Lord and you not you don't have a heart to repent? Right now, you're working for Satan if you're doing that. But if you make a mistake, you didn't messed up, you confessing your sins, that, that's an individual that belong to God. All right, let's continue. So it says here, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if we are living to please our flesh, we don't believe in God. We not we not serving God. OK, because if you truly believe God, you're going to do what he say. Let's continue. It says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Oh, if the Holy Ghost is dwelling in you, then you walking in the spirit. Because you can't do nothing other than what God wants you to do. He's dictating our thoughts and our actions. When we dwelling in the spirit of God. So it says now if any man have not the spirit of Christ. He is none of his. So this is a clear. A clear indication. As to whether or not we belong to God or not. If we have his spirit. And we as we continue on. With this Bible study. We're going to find out. If we have his spirit or if we don't. And if you don't have his spirit. God is on a recovery mission. He ain't willing that none should perish. So when we doing these Bible studies, these Bible studies are to reach everybody that's in the world. If it be God's will to turn their heart back to the Lord. It's not about judging and bashing. But what God's word does is it point out where we fallen short at. It shows us where we need to patch up the leaky roof in our house. It shows us what we need to eliminate out of our life. All right. Which is the sin. Things that's contrary to the Lord. So let's continue with this. Verse 10. It says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Now, wait a minute. How is Christ dwelling in you? Because remember, he said your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. Now, Christ is that spirit that's dwelling inside of us. So this is how we know we belong to him because he has given us his spirit. We cannot operate outside of the spirit and think that we belong to God. It don't work that way, family. So it says, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So you don't belong to Christ if you don't have his spirit. It says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, the spirit is life because of righteousness through Christ Jesus. He is our righteousness. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So this is how we know we got the spirit of Christ and we got a, a opportunity to raise up in the resurrection if we happen to pass away. So now let's skip down to verse 14 now. So it says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So when you led by the spirit of God or the mindset of God or the word of God, then you are the sons of God. It's just that simple. So this is how we can di differentiate between who 
belongs to God and who doesn't. So it says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So God is adopting us through his holy word. This is how we show that we belong to him when we apply his word to our life, family. Not just reading it, but also actually walking in the spirit. There's a lot of temptation and vices out here. But we got to stay away from this stuff for Christ's sake, because we're supposed to be crucifying this flesh. He must increase. We must decrease. We have to humble ourselves to this glorious wisdom that's in the words of God. All right. So it says the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the spirit is bearing witness that with our spirit that we are the children of God when the spirit of Christ is dwelling inside of us it says and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so be that we suffer with them that we may be also glorified together so once again this is how we understand that we belong to god through his spirit let's go and take a look at something else john 6 let's look at john 6 and verse 63 and let's see what that spirit is, because it's none other than the word of God. Jesus is going to let us know this. John 6 and verse 63. It says it is the spirit that quickeneth. So it's the spirit that quickeneth what makes alive. It said the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. God has given us the instructions on how to obtain eternal life. How to be a permanent resident in the kingdom of heaven. So he says, but there are some of you that believe not. So obviously you had some of the, these people that was around Jesus that didn't truly believe him. They didn't belong to Christ because they walked away from him. As a matter of fact, he's going to mention du uh, Judas down here. But let's continue. It says for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. And who should betray him. So God already know everything. So he already knew who was who. He already knew who the goats were. And he knew who the sheep were. And he said. Therefore said I unto you. That no man can come unto me. Except it were given unto him of my father. So the father got to draw us to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is drawing us to his father. All right. Once again. The father got to draw us. We have to be drawn to him and he already know. So he's not calling just no anybody. He already know who is who. You belong to him. He want all to come to repentance. But if you don't, you didn't really belong to God. We all didn't fell short and did some things that was not right. But it pricked our conscience when we knew, wait a minute, no, nah, this, this not right. We can't do this. And knowing that Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross and went through all of that stuff for the foolishness that we was committing. Why wouldn't you want to stop sinning against him? Just stop. Why wouldn't you? You know what he went through for us? A lot. One day we're going to see him face to face. So let's get it right right now. All this other stuff is a distraction. We need to be focused on our creator, our Lord and our savior. But anyway, it says from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away like you going to leave too? He didn't beg them to stay when he saw these people walking away. It, a river dirty. Then Simon Peter answered him. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. Where else are we going to go? Who else is speaking the words of eternal life? Nobody. Nobody. This is exclusively with Jesus Christ. All right. And he's speaking the father's word. So it says, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Once again, he got the words of eternal life. We ain't leaving him. And we aren't either. So this is how we know we belong to God. We stick with him no matter what. 
Acts 5. Acts 5. And let's take a look at verses 27. Because over here, Peter said that the Lord gave the Holy Ghost to all those that obey him. So let's take a look at this. Acts 5 and let's read verses 20. Let's just read verse 27. And then we'll skip down and look at verse 32. No, as a matter of fact, let's read uh, 27. Let's just read it. Let's read it. This is a Bible study channel. It says, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them. So they was in front of the high priest and the council in the first place because they had healed an impotent man. And they wound up getting in front of them. They, they brought them and uh, uh, put them in prison. All right. For preaching the gospel. So they were going through a lot. They were going, they were, uh, they were in prison for preaching the gospel. All right. Earlier they had healed the impotent man. That was, uh, uh, Peter and John over in Acts three. But in this case, in Acts five, they were put into prison for preaching the gospel and healing people. Come on. You know, these people that put them in jail, put the apostles in jail, were working for Satan. But let's continue. It says, saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. He said, man, didn't we tell you not to preach Jesus Christ? Now, I didn't been told before, you know, not to use the name Jesus and this and that. And guess what I'm doing? Jesus. It, it, it's all about Jesus. All right. Once again, it says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And the same sentiment is for us as well. We obey God rather than a man. He says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. You see how boldly Peter is speaking now that he got the Holy Ghost. Whereas before he denied Jesus Christ three times before the cock crew. All right. So once again, it says him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God have given to them that obey him. When we obey God, we get the Holy Ghost. This is how, you know, you belong to God. Because you obey him and now you got his Holy Spirit that's sealing you up, leading you and guiding you in all truth, leading us and guiding us into all truth when we obey God. So now let's continue looking at this again. And also, too, you remember uh, Mary, Mary Magdalene uh, over here in uh, Luke 7, was it, it was Luke 7? Uh, what she did was. She uh, was washing Jesus's feet with her tears and her hair, showing that she was sorrowful for the sins that she had committed. And the Lord forgave her. So she was one of the ones that belonged to God because she was sorrowful for her sins. Somebody that truly belonged to God, they're not going to be sinning and then not have no conscience about it. Oh, you're going to make the littlest mistake. Oh, God, I'm so sorry about that. Please forgive me. But a wicked person, they make a mistake and they love making mistakes. They love sin. They, some, the scriptures say some of them can't even sleep unless they did somebody wrong, unless they cause some mischief. So the question that we need to ask ourselves is if we really, truly belong to God, when his Holy Spirit is convicting us, how do we change? Are we obeying the Holy Spirit when he's telling us what to do? It's how you know you truly belong to God when you're obedient to him. Not going off of your emotions and doing your own thing. So anyway, John 3 and verse 18, it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Those of us who know that the lake of fire will be real. We're afraid of that place. We don't want to go. We don't want to go there. So what do we do? We consider our ways. 
We think about what we do before we do it. All right. So let's continue. So it says. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So some people love evil more than they do good. Because they that that sin is addictive. Satan is double. I mean, Satan is really like blinding their mind and not realizing. You know, you're not realizing that one day you got to pay for all of that stuff that you're doing. So we got to have a conscience about how we operate because God is watching. So it says, for everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So that's somebody that's working for Satan. They don't want to come to the light. And remember, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the light of all men. He's the one that's shining in this dark and wicked world, showing us which way to walk, what to stay away from, how to move, what to say. He's doing everything for us. It says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So the one that's walking in their integrity in the word of God, they come into the light. Who is the light? Jesus Christ. He is the light, family. So once again, let's go over here. He, oh, I said it over here in uh, John 1. Go back and read it on your own. But he the light that lighted every man, or every man, every man. Every man, let's go over here. First John. First John 4. And let's take a look at this over here. First John 4. And let's read this. It ain't nothing like God's word. This is the best information that we can ever read on the face of the planet. Better than any self-help book that was written by any other author. This right here is the way to go. First John 4. Let's read verses two through eight. So here, once again, this is how we know we belong to God. It says, hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So if you confessing that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, you are of God. We are of God because we confess this. We confess in this publicly. In front of thousands and if not millions of people. And ain't ashamed about it. And ain't going to flip up on this. Because God is backing us. Yeah, I know it's it's uh, easier said uh, uh, than done when the pressure ain't on. But still, when that pressure get on, we relying on Christ Jesus. Not on our own because the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But it says... And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. So once again, you got a spirit that's confessing Christ Jesus. Then you got one that's denying him. Which one are we? We the ones that's confessing Christ Jesus because we know we get what we got coming. We not condemned. That's a beautiful thing. I thank God for his promises and him being faithful and loyal to his word. He says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God is operating in us. It's him that's working in us to do his good pleasure and his will. We greater than the ones that's in the world serving Satan. So it says they are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world and the world hear of them. So everybody got who they subscribe to, who they listening to. You got some people that subscribe to foolishness, which goes in a category of Satan. Then you got people that subscribe to wisdom, which comes from God. All wisdom comes from God. All right. So once again, it says we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So John said, you, if you hear us, then, or if you hear God, then you hear us because you speak in God's word. But if you don't hear him, you're not of God. And this is how you can differentiate between the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. 
It says, be loved. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. So once again, everybody that's born and loves God, you love the brotherhood too. You love the, you love the members of the body of Christ. It's not just limited to the brotherhood. Brothers and sisters make up the body of Christ of all nations in every generation. So once again, it says, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He said God is love. That's the first fruit of the spirit. Okay, let's continue with this now. Verses 15 and 16. Let's skip down. It says, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Don't we make this confession every single day? We confess right now that Jesus is the son of God. He is. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. This is how we know we truly belong to God because we dwell in him and he dwelling in us. Remember, the scripture said our body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. Who you think the Holy Ghost is? It's God dwelling in us. All right. So once again, let's continue. And I'm not saying that there's three in a Godhead. There's two, but it's his spirit through his word. We already read that. Lord willing, we'll do a, a lesson on who the Holy Ghost actually is, which is none other than Jesus Christ. His spirit is his word. But anyway, it's the mindset that he gave us. We'll take a look at that. So let's go and see this. We got plenty of scriptures on that. Let's go over here and look at uh, John 10. John 10. And let's have a look at verses one. Uh, let's read one through five. And it will skip down. So Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. So you're trying to get salvation any other way than going through Jesus Christ. You're the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So if you're going through Jesus Christ, you acknowledging that he's your shepherd. It says to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. So he even knows you personally. He said he called his own sheep by name. He got a name for us. It says, and when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So we follow Jesus Christ. We ain't following nobody else. We ain't following Muhammad and Buddha and all these other false gods. We follow what thus saith the Lord spoken by the mouth of all of the prophets. Given by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ got the word from the father. That's who we follow him. It says, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from them. For they know not the voice of strangers. They don't know strangers' voice. We get away from bad doctrine. Somebody trying to talk about Jesus. No. Mm -mm. That ain't the spirit of Christ, buddy. Let's skip down to verse uh, 14 now. It says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. So God know who we are and we know who he is. Let's continue. Uh, let's go and take a look. We got a few more places. Galatians 2. Galatians 2. And let's have a look at verses. Let me see. Galatians 2. I went too far. Galatians 2 and verse 20. Let's see what Paul had to say. So when we truly belong to Christ Jesus, we crucify the lust of the flesh. Because Christ is dwelling in us. And he ain't going to be dwelling with no filth. So Galatians 2. Galatians 2 and verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. 
And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He said, this is the lifestyle I live now. I'm sacrificing my flesh so that I can live for God. And you see how he said Christ is living in him? It says, but Christ liveth in me. Once again, your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. Christ is the spirit. Which, Lord willing, this week we're going to touch on, once again, that spirit that's given life is Jesus Christ. I know some of us, I, I, I've, I've been taught before that, or I've heard before, that uh, the Holy Ghost was uh, Gabriel. And, you know, Gabriel, he is a Holy Spirit, but he is not the Holy Spirit that's dwelling in us, giving us life. That's none other than Christ Jesus. Angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs, heirs of righteousness. All right. But we're going to clear that up, Lord willing, this week. Well, not we going to clear it up. The scriptures are clear it up. We just going to open up the Bible and read it. All right. So let's go and take a look at this final place. And then we'll continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's take a look at Second Timothy two, and this is a sure way that you can know after all of those scriptures that read and read to show how we truly belong to God. Let's take a look at this one final scripture on this subject. Second Timothy two. Let's take a look at verse 19. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. He knows who belongs to him and he knows who doesn't. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So the ones that really, truly know and love God, we left sin. We left it. We're not making a career out of sinning against God habitually. All right. We calling on the name of the father in Jesus name. All right. So let's continue with this. Let's continue with the mission statement of the channel which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So that was a few ways to know how you truly belong to God. So now let's go back now and look at uh, Psalms 86. Let's go and look at the merciful God that we serve, because if you didn't fail short, you didn't sin, confess your sins and turn back to the Lord and watch him abundantly pardon. I love this right here. Look at this. Psalms 86, verse five. It says, for thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. And plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. He's very merciful, family. So let's take the opportunity to call on the name of the Father in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here, to read your holy word. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for extending your mercy and your grace toward us. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your word from out of heaven. May you bless us and keep us. May you strengthen us, Father God. May you take our anxieties away. May you comfort the brokenhearted. May you heal up the ones that are sick and wounded. May you release the prisoners out of their prison house, Lord. May you, may you do a marvelous work and show that you are real, Lord, as you, as you have shown me plain as day and shown those of us that you truly exist, Lord. Allow your power to rest upon us, Lord, and be with us. So, Heavenly Father, we confess our sins, the sins of our household, the sins of the body of Christ. Lord God, we praying for the the we praying for the body of Christ, the less fortunate, the fatherless, the widows, the wrongfully imprisoned and the ones that are sick and afflicted among us. Lord God, we pray for people who are dealing with financial issues, marital issues and whatever other kind of issues they're dealing with. Lord, please hear our prayer, Lord God, as we call upon you. And in sincerity and in truth and let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart O lord be acceptable in thy sight our strength and our redeemer in the almighty name of jesus we ask that you pray for us as well so with that being said family i love you all so much and may the spirit of god rest upon each and every one of us lord willing we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the holy scriptures until then peace in the almighty name of jesus